finally brewed. You ever notice how you always have to brew Earl Grey tea for about five to ten minutes more, depending on the type of tea bag? That well, maybe not ten minutes, but at least like five to seven minutes more than the recommended temperature to get any flavor in it at all. I think it's very silly. Maybe it's because I used to be a coffee drinker. I still am a coffee drinker occasionally. Anyway, hello and welcome to the DM's Journal. <laughs> um, we did not play D&D &D, uh, this week or last week or the week before, and I don't think we're going to play D&D &D the next week, and I'm kind of itching to not only make a video, but to make D&D &D happen. I've even gone so far as to suggest doing it online, and I know that most people have been doing it online these days, and that's not a big deal, and it shouldn't be a big deal for me. But I generally have not enjoyed online D&D, &D. um, and I wonder if that's because I, I wasn't in control of the situation, um, and I'm realizing now that I like to be in control a lot more than I thought I did. <laughs> I I was watching um, Matt Colville's Running the Game, number 92, it just came out, and it was talking about, um, it, it asked me a question that I had never thought about before. Um, he asked, what did you, meaning me, obviously, but he asked the audience, he asked the DMs what they liked about DMing try and figure out what makes it fun. And I, I had been so worried on everything that I had to do, I never really thought about, okay, how do I have fun with this? And there are a few obvious ones. I love making worlds. I, I know that one. I, I really enjoyed making worlds and coming up with, with the criminal societies and coming up with all, all of the backgrounds. Um, the, the stuff that I'm, I'm less enthused about, I think, is actually, like, wor I mean, worrying about a plot, I worry about the plot. I, I worry that I won't create plots, and so maybe that's, like, oddly enough, one of the things that I don't enjoy about uh, about DMing, or, or I have yet to find enjoyment in it so far, um, is is making up a plot. D and D is very different from any other creative pursuits, in that the audience is is immediate and right there, and they're personal. I'm used to an audience. I'm an actor. I've acted in front of audiences before. So I I do artist modeling as well, sometimes completely nude, so I'm totally okay being nude in front of a bunch of strangers. But in both of those things, the audience, like, they're very, very strict, there, there's a separation, there's a boundary, and there's very, like, there's delineated rules, but these people are my friends. They're, they're smart, they're funny, I know that at least two of, three of them, four of them, they're all actually, no, all of them, every single one of them are intensely creative. They, they, I mean, God, the backstory that one of those guys wrote for me was genius. I loved it. It was engaging. It was amazing. There's a lot of pressure to create stuff that's, that's fun and engaging. And then I was watching Critical Role because I'm a huge Critical Role fan. Uh, have been since they only had 12 episodes up. <laughs> But I don't engage in fandoms because I don't do communities at all. I don't know. I just don't engage in communities as a... I'm, I'm a hermit. <laughs> Can't you tell? <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? Yes, I was watching Critical Role, and the latest episode was a travel episode. They're doing, um, they're traveling in a dangerous land, and there's, you know, roll d20, something happens, roll d20, something happens. And I was like, oh, and the players were totally engaged. The players do everything. And, and it was, I suppose it was a good, like, they brought so much to the table. And, and Liam has created a wizard's tower, so for like half an hour at least, every game, Liam gets to run around and describe everything. And Matt just kind of sits there and eats popcorn. And I was like, 
oh oh i don't have to do it all it's not like these guys are children and i'm leading them along a story they all they really want all they really need is a sandbox and all i have to do is improvise provide a few reactions know some big stuff and i do i know the bigger plot but other than that i can let these people loose on this world and and shit shit will happen sorry i thought i heard someone and i got like paranoid for a second because i'm a hermit <laughs> So I'm like, I can't wait to start playing again because I, I, I can't wait to get this plot off of the rails as fast as possible. And I mean, it's already gone pretty far off the rails, but I figure with this, with this mansion that they're going to, with the express purpose of fucking it up, because me being the improv that I am, just sort of gave them that as a, oh, I don't know, blow up a house or shit is, is that's my version of improv. So they're going to literally blow up a house and and I don't like if I choose to from this point on I don't have to read the plot at all. I could just throw it out the window and start to do my own stuff and just like do I and I don't even need to worry about making encounters balance because I can just type into the internet God love the internet encounters for level X people and just go okay you and you and you and you and bam I have everything I need so <laughs> I'm like I I've had a few revelations this week that have made me more confident than ever to run D&D &D. Uh, so I really want it to happen, so hopefully we, we can get it happening, and um, flu season is coming up, and uh, spikes are coming up, and we might have to do it online. It also just might be easier, because I'm super busy at the moment. Um, I'm taking, I'm getting certified, I have to take classes, and do this stupid online course. But it's okay, it's chill, we found a different... We found an avenue that's going to help me learn so I don't have to listen to that m monotone voice and beat my head against a brick wall. I have a book I can read, which is much, much better. So I'm going to read the book, and I'm going to be okay, and I'm going to pass the test, and I'm going to get certified, and everything's going to be fine. And um, But while I'm doing that, like... <sighs> so like the first thing that goes when I have a lot of stress around me um, is my social energy. It, it's the hardest thing for me to keep up. Uh, I have very, very little social energy. So as th soon as things get stressful or if I, if I have to expend energy elsewhere, the first thing I get rid of is, okay, leaving the house. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just nip that in the bud. Uh, and this is... Trust me, this is me pre-COVID times. I, like, in college it was my dorm room. I just, I, I just never left my dorm room unless for very extraordinary measures. And, and, you know, when you're super depressed, there's not a lot of things that are going to make you leave your dorm room. So I just stayed in there, like, all the time. Um, on the weekends, I mean, because the college, like, shut down. Why am I telling you this? Well, it's a journal, so I guess that's why. Um, but the college, like, shut down because it was a commuter college, and, uh, like, I had two meals on the weekend. So I would just, in, in, in this hat, by the way, this is how long I've had this hat, in, in, that's probably why I'm telling you this story. Uh, um, so yeah, I, I would just go in, in a bathrobe, not this bathrobe, but another bathrobe and, and pink fuzzy slippers. I have puffin slippers now. They're very fancy. They're not like the the animal puffin. They're they're from they're from a fancy magazine. My dad got them for me. Boy, I'm just spilling everything personal here, ain't I? Um. Anyway, yeah. So I just grab like everything I could, a bunch of finger foods, and sit in my dorm all day and watch Castle, and that was my weekend things. So I'm a hermit. The point of all that rambling was to say that we're probably gonna have to do online, which is going to be its own journey but i like and know all these people well and i'll be the one in control i'll be controlling the maps i'll be telling the story and i'll be with people who are who are more engaged we'll see 
we'll see. I'll try to do, um, I'm, I'm definitely want to, to find a way to do video capture, because I find listening to a voice kind of excruciating sometimes, like just a voice. Um, unless it's a podcast. I think I'm losing the trail here. Well, I've been going for about 15 minutes and my energy is flagged, so I think that's a good enough time as I need to call it. With cuts, I'm probably betting this is going to be around a 10 to 12 minute episode. Which is cool, there's not a lot of content. I'm just making a video because I want to keep in the habit and I want to make this into something. So, at least just for my own gratification. So, there you go. <laughs> Alright, cool. Bye.